Let's graph this guy. Notice that he's already set up in a, in a perfect form for you. It's just like the guys we did the other day. We know that this is a parabola. Of course, we're talking about quadratic functions, so quadratic functions are parabolic. The square tells you it's a parabola. Can you tell me the vertex? Positive 5. And negative 9, because think about what you would tell me. You would tell me go right 5, down 9. That's what you would have told me. So if I went right 5 and down 9, I would have this point right here. Does it open up or down? Nope. What tells you it opens up? You've got a positive coefficient here. Of course, if this is your vertex and you open down, I didn't really do a good job of giving you a, an appropriate graph, right? So this is my vertex. What is your axis of symmetry? It's x equals 5, which means when I come over here to graph this, I will have this vertical line going through x equals 5, right? Let's find out the rest of the information. See if you can find your x-intercepts. How do we say to find the x-intercepts? You set that whole thing equal to zero and you solve it. So that means if I take this in a different color here. If I take this whole function right here and I set it equal to zero and solve it, I think we should use the square root property. Remember this? So if I use the square root property and I completely isolate my mm -hmm. square, x minus 5 squared is equal to what? Do the math in your head. How did I get the square by itself? How did I get this guy by itself? What did I have to do first? Nine. Had to add the 9 and then do what? Nine. Divide by 2. That's how I got the square by itself. And then what do I do? Use the square root property. So I have that x minus 5 equals plus or minus. This thing gets kind of weird. The square root of 9 is 3, but the square root of 2 has to be the square root of 2. But if you remember back in the day, we would rationalize this <coughs> denominator by multiplying top and bottom times the square root of 2. Can we just look at our computer and tell us what the... It's not going to be exact. I require you to be exact. So when I move the 5 over, that's positive 5 plus or minus. What's the numerator? 3 square root of 2. What's the denominator? Square root of 2. What's the square root of 2 times square root of 2? 2. Square root of 4, which just gives you 2. So this right here, it is ugly. <laughs> I agree with you. I mean, it's not like I made the problem up or anything. Uh, the x-intercepts, you will list them as this. 5 plus 3 squared of 2 over 2 comma 0. And then your other one, 5 <coughs> minus 3 squared of 2 over 2, 0. Are these going to be nice points to plot? No. no. That's kind of a shame. Well, let's see if we can go on and find the y-intercept. The y-intercept should be nice and easy. You just have to do what? So you have to plug in 0, right? Make sure you do plug 0 into this guy correctly. If I plug in 0, 0 minus 5 is negative 5. What's negative 5 squared? 25 times 2 minus 9 is... 41. It's very easy to say the y-intercept is negative 9, but I want you to see what would happen if you said it was equal to negative 9. <laughs> if I said the y-intercept equals 0, negative 9, I'd be right here. Are you going to get a parabola from here to, if this is your vertex, are you just going to go straight over and then curve up? You know that would look ugly, right? Mm -hmm. Now, let's plot the rest of these points. Notice that my coefficient here is 2. 
So that means when I go out here, here's 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. After I square this, I'm going to multiply times 2, just like I did yesterday. What's 1 squared? 1. But what happens when you double that? You get 2, right? What's 2 squared? 4. You go up 4 units, but then you have to double that, and you get what? 8. 8, so you're up here. What's 3 squared? 9, and when you double that, you get 18. So the normal parabola would have taken this path right here through these values that I have like that. But when I put a 2 in front of that, that's going to be a stretch, right? So it takes my graph and it stretches it out. So it's going to look more like this. Graphing with a coefficient of 2 is not the most fun thing to do. So I get that guy. How do I graph the other side of this without having, having to do a lot of work? I just flip it over because yeah. there's that symmetry that we talked about. Mm -hmm. So this guy flips over here. This was another nice point. Notice how it's two units away from the axis of symmetry. So go over two units here. This is three units away, so one, two, three. And then we just copy this guy over. Is there going to be a lot of graphing on the test? There will be a lot of graphing on the test. Question? Yes. Back to when we were doing the x-intercept? Yes. If, do I remember correctly when we have uh, square root as a denominator that we're supposed to clear that so that it's a real number? And is that the reason you did that? Otherwise, uh, the, what was no, number one, the square root of two is a real number because there's nothing imaginary there. But in terms of simplifying, yes, you want to multiply. So you want a, you want a, a non? A non-radical denominator. Okay, so that's the reason you did that. Otherwise, it would still be the right answer. Right. At plus or minus. 3 over the square root. Square root two. Okay. Right, and some textbooks and some classes, it is okay to leave square roots in the denominator. It just helps with things. But for simplifying, mm -hmm. for us, we typically don't leave the radical down there. Right. So that's how you want it. Yeah. I just let you know, I'm not a fan of rationalizing the denominator. It's not something I like to do. It's one of these necessary evils. You just kind of suck it up. But it did simplify to a, a rational number. So right, you're correct. I, it's I not rational. why you were doing that. I just wanted to understand. Right. I mean you're what you want. That's all. Right. I, I would. I would want this. Okay. Now, I mean, if you if you didn't, uh, yep. Yeah. I'm not going to yell and scream at you. <laughs> well, that's the concern is whether it's right or not. So here is the computer generated graph. Pretty, pretty spot on, right? Mm -hmm. Totally awesome. <laughs>